Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we continue to wire up our Link ECU. All right, those of you who were watching last week will have seen that I started uh, working on the wiring harness for the uh, Link ECU I'm using on this 911 engine. Now, um, you may have seen my uh, inexperienced show when uh, I was talking about Link's uh, fantastic ability to do the forbidden dance. <laughs> Is that actually lambda sensors, not lumbata sensors? Yeah, uh, or... Uh, Lombarda modules, I should say. In any case, I am moving back on and continuing on with this wiring. I'm actually, um, I'm actually enjoying the process of designing this wiring uh, much more than what I thought because I'm just finding that trying to do it properly makes it uh, just, just much better, and uh, I'm quite happy with uh, how this all goes. Most of what I've been doing, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. I did realise that uh, I actually built the. Uh, power wires for the lower set of coil packs. I actually joined them together for some reason, so I'm going to have to just cut them apart and uh, and remake the lower the lower sections. So that's what I mentioned last week. Is I'm going to have uh, three separate uh, relays for the ECU system. So there's going to be the one main relay, which is going to run the power to the ECU and the injectors, and um, uh, and then I'm going to have two more relays in the rear of the car that'll run the uh, one for the upper set of coil packs, another one for the lower set of coil packs, and then there'll be another one in the front um, with the fuel pump. So that will be a, a separate system uh, as well. So I need to go through now and fix my power and ground wires, my lower power and ground wires for my lower set of coil packs. Alright, so I've gone through now, I've uh, finished all my power and ground to all of my coil packs and the power going through to the injectors, that's all laid out. And now I've gone through and I've laid my A and B looms from my Link ECU over the, uh, just sort of over the engine. And um, if you remember from last week, I put some tape where I know that they're going to come out in the car and where they're going to basically sit so I can line them up on the engine so the whole thing will actually fit. I'm giving myself a bit of extra space and I'll, I'll show you why later, but um, I'm going to start laying out the individual wires using the, um, the installation guide. Uh, it actually has, like I, like I mentioned previously, it's got a pin out for every single wire and it tells you what color the wire is and then you fill out, I need to go through and as I go through I'll fill out what each wire is going to so that I make sure that it's all cross-referenced and we actually have a wiring diagram that we can uh, problem shoot etc later. Hopefully though we don't have any problems and it's all good. So I'm going to start laying out the wires now into these looms and just sort of creating this loom by just taping bits together and then once that's all done eventually we'll be able to actually cover it all, put all the, uh, the uh, plugs on the end of it and it should all work, I hope. All right, I've started laying out the loom here and uh, I've discovered that the uh, it's it's quite sensibly laid out. So all the blue wires is blue with the different colored traces. They're all of the uh, ignition wires and all of the brown wires are all of the injector wires. So I can just sort of go through and, uh, and lay them out pretty simply. Uh, they are separated out you know, injector one, two, and three, and I'm just doing that all, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six for the uh, the cylinders, for the injector and the ignition. The ignition wires I am going to have to splice into because obviously I need to split that signal so that it will fire both injectors at the same time. So um, I'm going to split them at the same point so that the uh, the loom is going to travel down with the, the same point as where the, the power is split on the loom. So I get the loom, everything just flows together. That's the plan. All right, this episode I am predicting is going to be pretty light on the uh, the actual action shots of me doing work because it's not really that interesting to watch. But there's been a spare, fair bit of time spent here. But you can see here that I have uh, I've got the wires now set up for all of the injectors. They're all laid out there, and I've got all the wires taped up for each of the coil packs. 
Uh, also for the lower coil packs down here, the, uh, the wires are all taped up and ready to uh, um, put inside a loom and plugs uh, on them. But I don't want to put plugs on them until I've got all of the wiring set up so that I can uh, sheathe all the looms and then put the plugs on last. Okay, so now this portion of the wiring is done, the injectors and the coil packs. Um, I thought I might just take a second to talk a little bit about uh, the fly-by-wire throttle. Now, I had some comments uh, after last week's video, after mentioning I'm doing a fly-by-wire throttle, people asking why, and um, yeah, why not just use the cable, because the, uh, the factory cable works quite well. Those of you who watched the previous series of me actually building the car will know that um, my car's been converted from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. And when I bought the car, it had this really nasty looking linkage set up that they'd, they'd somehow set up to the factory pedal box. And it, it wasn't a factory right-hand drive pedal set. I was not happy with it at all. So I ended up getting a aftermarket race pedal box and, uh, and I put that in the car. So I'm happy with that for the brakes. The clutch, I should be able to make the, uh, the cable clutch still work on the clutch particularly because being a right-hand drive car, the clutch pedal is right next to the tunnel where the cables come from, that's easy. But for the accelerator pedal, I'd have to get another cable. I couldn't use a factory cable because you need to be able to have a, um, uh, a pivot at the center. So I'd have to have this sort of pivot at the accelerator and go all the way through to through the other two pedals to get to the tunnel to actually uh, pull the, uh, the cable for the accelerator. It's, it's, it was a thing, I could have run a cable up and all the way back but um, I think fly-by-wire has a lot of benefits that um, uh, come into it. For one thing, um, with individual throttle bodies, it's, it's good to have some sort of idle control so that they you know, can just sort of balance the, uh, the idle. And that can all be done internally with just, uh, without putting a separate uh, idle control motor on this, uh, on this setup. It can all be done straight from fly-by-wire throttle. For the sensor for the pedal and for here, what I did is I, uh, I talked to Raceworks and we were scratching our heads about how to set it up. Now, we could have potentially tried to buy a fly-by-wire throttle body from something and I could butcher it and make the, uh, the butterfly connect up to this. What we ended up doing is we found the, um, the BMW M5 V10 actually has fly-by-wire throttle motor designed for ITB. So this is the motor here that uh, Raceworks uh, sorted out for me. It's a, uh, it's as I said, it's, it's definitely not the cheapest unit around, but it is, uh, but it is made to uh, fit the purpose. And this is what I'm going to have to connect up to the engine. That is where it's going to start getting interesting, and I'll show you what I mean. So with these throttle bodies to uh, accelerate, obviously these are in idle at the moment. Um, they need to be rotated in the direct, this direction, sort of towards the front of the car or from underneath towards the back of the car to rotate this arm and that's the accelerator. Now, uh, thankfully RHD with this kit, it comes with three different length little uh, linkages that go onto this arm so that I can set them up whatever direction I want, clamp them on, and, um, and also by doing that, I can get different leverage depending on what sort of throttle you use. Now, in my case, because I'm using this M5 throttle, I've got to work out a way to mount this back here on the back of the engine somehow to actually control this throttle. And um, that's, where, that's where it gets a little bit more interesting. Ideally, I'd want to uh, set the, the throttle up uh, sort of in that direction, just about here would be perfect to set up the, the throttle. The trouble is, is because of the angle of the arc, I want them to both do the same thing. I don't want them to be doing sort of, sort of that sort of pulling motion because it, will, it won't be linear. There will be a change in the way it goes. So if you saw a graph, it would probably be like a, a wave. It's not going to be an accurate linear pull and I'd like to keep the angles the same on the motor and on the arm to actually do what is uh, is necessary. So if I had it facing this direction, this arm I'd have to connect from the bottom and it would actually have to do that. And yeah, that's not cool. So that means I have to mount it this way. The trouble is, is that I have this uh, crankcase breather here. I have the motor that has to sit right over next to the throttle bodies. It's too tight for the linkage. So I need to make up a unit that makes it sit over somewhere like this. 
um, and that's starting to raise it up high. But what I'm thinking that uh, I might do is actually flip it upside down and that way I actually have the wiring for the, uh, the throttle position sensor on here facing the back and also I can take up, you know, sort of use the available space better and also then the pull of the, uh, the actual motor itself will be in the direction that I want. So that is what I'm thinking. It just means that I'm going to have to come up with some sort of creative bracket to hold it firmly to the engine so that it doesn't move and it actually um, does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so thankfully there is actually a program with the, all of the information you need uh, that you can download from Link's site for setting up the uh, ECU, which is really handy because I have very little idea and I'm learning as I go. But it's, uh, it seems to be pretty straightforward. So I've just been searching like each uh, input that I need to do. And the next thing I'm looking at is I'm looking at the throttle position sensor. It's showing me here exactly how they, uh, the general throttle position sensor works and how to wire it up. And that makes it even easier. I just was going through the, uh, the actual wiring loom itself, just picking out the, uh, the correct colored wires I need. And then I realized that they have some of them that are actually already bunched together, ready to go. This one, which is already set up for TPS. So there are my three wires all ready to go. Okay, so another sensor that's already labeled uh, nicely ready to go, making things easy on. This is the intake air temperature sensor. So this, it needs to go in the flow of air that the engine's getting to get, be an accurate uh, reading. I'm thinking that the best place for me to put it um, is just in through this, uh, this plate for the bell mount. So these are the beautiful uh, bell mounts that I have. Uh, and there's, uh, there's the filter elements that sit on top of these and then uh, hats that sit over the top. These are we sitting on top of here like so. And I'm thinking that I'm going to drill and put the uh, air temperature sensor uh, just in the back in here. Let me know in the comments if that's, uh, if that's gonna be suitable. I think that should be, uh, should be quite good in there. Um, I can sort of have the, uh, the loom going straight up in with the TPS, the throttle position sensor, and it can just be just straight above the throttle position sensor up inside the, uh, the filter element. I think it should be a perfect spot for it. So, um, all right, I've got the wiring laid out for that. So that's one more sensor sort of uh, organized in the loom. Let's keep striding forward. All right, so my next sensor I've got to work out how to wire up is the NOx sensors. And um, the thing is, is that they come with two shielded cables. I know these two are actually the uh, cables for the NOx sensors, but I'm not sure which one's which. And uh, there's no uh, specific label on, so I'm just gonna uh, continuity test them to see which one is which. Now, uh, to do that, I've got out my trusty um, power scanner. This is not a sponsored product in any way, but I've just, since I discovered this thing on another YouTube channel, actually, Flying Spark Garage, uh, it, is, it is a fantastic piece of gear. It is well worthwhile if you're um, playing around with cars. Basically, it's got a little toggle switch on it, and uh, you connect up to a battery. I've got it connected up to a, um, a power pack here, and uh, by pressing uh, up or down, you can actually send uh, positive or negative uh, charge through the, through the point and it also tells resistance and all this sort of stuff. It's way easier than using a multimeter. Uh, I, I love this thing, it is fantastic. There's a link in the description if you want to uh, uh, get one yourself. I, I, I love it. Um, in any case, it's quite should be quite an easy uh, option. I know it's one of two wires, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to connect up to uh, the end of these two cables and we'll be able, soon be able to tell which one is the, uh, the one that I want. That was easy. Yeah, I just connected uh, one end to the, to the cable and uh, the only thing that's giving me any signal is the, uh, the one that I want. So that is knock sensor one, which is the right one. So I'm on the right track. All right, this looks like a massive bird's nest now, but it's actually uh, getting pared down quite nicely. And um, basically the bulk of this here is uh, not necessary. There's a few more wires I still need to track down. Um, I've got to talk to Link and work out exactly what I need as far as throttle position sensors and stuff goes. Because at the moment there's uh, one throttle position sensor which is actually on the, the butterflies itself, on the arms for the butterflies. But there is, with e-throttles, there's a second redundancy built in 
on the electronic throttle uh, as well, and that is actually mounted to mounted to the actual actuator as well. So um, I need to work out whether I should have both of them connected as uh, redundancy or not, uh, work out exactly what they need um, and work out how to wire it. So there's that still to go in and there's also the uh, the map sensors to go in, but I'm still, because uh, I don't have the ECU itself yet, I need to uh, sort that out. But moving forward, because I've got a lot of these wires all ready to go, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start putting on some of the expandable braided sleeves and just uh, have a go and see how it works. And what I mean by that is Raceworks have actually supplied me with a, a bunch of this uh, braided expandable sleeves in a bunch of different sizes that you can put over this wiring. And it's pretty cool stuff because you can see here that uh, it's sort of, it's a nice neat looking thing, but when you actually squish it together, it expands quite a lot. And you can, so you can fit it over your wiring and then pull it out nice and straight and keep it nice and tight and get everything looking neat and tidy. So I'm gonna put some of these sleeves on some of the bits like the uh, the coil pack looms and bits and pieces because I, I've never used it before, but I'm gonna need a section for sort of up until every splice. And then when it splices into two, obviously I'm gonna to have to get another two sections to go on that and and keep going along down the line. So let's, uh, let's see how it works. All right, that was my first go at using this expandable mesh stuff and it actually makes quite a nice, neat looking finish. So the way I did it is um, I ran a piece over all of the wires, all the way up to the join. And because it's expandable, just with the tip, expand it over the tip and keep working with the tip and making it sort of big over the tip so you can work the tip all the way through and, uh, and slide it on. Once I sl slide it on, I actually uh, sort of pull it all out nice and straight so that it's uh, nice and tight. And, uh, and holds the, the wires quite nicely. And then in the, uh, the joins where I've sort of got a separate piece here and a separate piece uh, in between, I've actually just gone around it with some loom tape. Now, I, um, after watching the Skid Factory's stuff, um, he actually suggested using this loom tape. It's much nicer than the regular electrical tape. It's actually a cloth finish. It's much nicer, it's a soft cloth finish, and it gives a much nicer finish on your, uh, on, the uh, thing, it doesn't seem to have that sort of stretchy gumminess that the, uh, the, the regular sort of plastic elastic stuff does. So um, that's the first one done. So that actually looks nice and neat. Once I actually get some plugs on the end and, and, uh, and I sort of t tie this all into place, it's gonna be a very nice, neat looking uh, wiring loom because I want this whole thing to be just a neat, simple, well laid out system that I can uh, use and work on in the future and have no issues. So um, I'm liking the look of that. That looks really good. Okay, so the EFI wiring is really getting there and it's not as crazy difficult as I thought it would be. But um, yeah, that's, that's all I can get done for this episode. So next week, hopefully um, I can have all this wiring sorted. I can finish doing uh, all the rest of the bits and then possibly even start looking at playing with some connectors. Also make sure uh, you go and head to Porsche Parts by Jeff to compare prices on Porsche Parts from uh, about 30 different stores now. I think we've got, we're up to listing 130,000 different parts or something like that now. So it's a really good way to uh, go through and search. We've also just added a new feature. We've got some of our uh, partner stores. There's actually some discount codes on there. So if it comes up in the bottom and there's a, uh, a voucher on your individual item, you can click on that and they've actually got some uh, discount codes on there. So go and have a look at that. There's also, uh, we've put some icons on each individual listing so you can see whether it's uh, sort of uh, free shipping, um, in stock, there's, there's, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but go and check it out. It's, it's really exciting. I'm really, uh, I'm really liking the way this Porsche Parts by Jeff is going, but uh, great place to compare parts. And I've actually used it a few times myself um, to try and find some, some rare parts and things that I didn't realize I could get. Uh, it, it really actually works. So uh, check it out. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe. Go and uh, have a look at some merch in the description. Good uh, Christmas gifts, uh, coffee mugs and shirts and hoodies and all sorts of stuff. It's cold on the other side of the world. It's hot here. So yeah, whatever suits your climate. All right, that's it. Uh, follow me on Facebook and Instagram. See you guys.